their struggles as of late. SMU has won three of their last four home games. The only loss in that stretch was to Houston. It'll be Franklin, Agunane, and DeAndre Williams tipping it off, and we are off and running from Moody Coliseum. Memphis wants to come out and just execute. Hendrick Davis pops a three early. So Davis in a homecoming performance starts early. And Penny was very smart. He got him going off the first play off of a pin down action. Davis played three years here at SMU. So he's a little bit familiar with the personnel. Phelps, Nuttall, McBride is senior, ODG, and Aguinane as the three is knocked down to counter and we're even at three apiece. Jaden Hardaway from the corner. And that's one reason why Hardaway is in the game because he can stretch the defense with his three-point shooting. He can also play some point and take some of the pressure off of Davis. Hardaway has been battling a hip injury. He has started the last couple of games, but limited action. Corner three. That misses from Darius McBride. Not all. He'll try another one from deep. That's good. Nuttall has really stepped up his game this year. He's a hard-working young man, plays extremely hard, and has really good range on his jump shot. Davis, on the attack, draws the whistle. But watch Nuttall on this. You see he gets a little space, and he can catch and shoot as well as anybody in the American Conference. And Nuttall has been a key factor for this offense throughout the season. He's a team leader in made threes. With 57 of them coming in to tonight. Memphis with a win can lock up the two seed in the American tournament. Williams may have been blocked, but a foul instead. And DeAndre Williams will go to the line. And one of the things Penny Hardaway has been working with William, he tells him when you get the ball in the low post, we want you to shoot a layup, not a jump shot. And that time you saw William staying away from the basket, and that's really not the way they want to utilize him. They want to utilize him going to the basket on a lot of their action. So two team fouls early. One on Phelps, one on Jalen Smith. And DeAndre Williams short on the first free throw and Penny Hardaway you got the sense of talking to him today he knows the importance of tonight's game without question you know people don't really understand how much he studies the game he understands the game he's always done that as a player at Memphis he did it when he was with Orlando he did the same thing there and he was a leader off the floor so he understands how important this game is and what they need to do to be successful for postseason. Williams, the reigning American Conference Player of the Week with one out of two. Battle down low. Outside for Nuttall. Gets a step, hangs in the air, scoop shot, no good. And the rebound corralled by Elijah McCadden and now nearly stolen. Back down the floor by Zurich Phelps. It'll stay with Memphis. I, I really like the way SMU shared the basketball that last possession. Rob Lanier, a coach's coach, um, just um, unbelievable player relationship. He's been a lot of stops. He's played under with Billy Donovan uh, at Florida, uh, Rick Barnes at Tennessee. He really understands the game. He brings so much to this SMU program. And an illegal screen that will send play the other way. You know, it's one thing, Derek, when you've been to the mountaintop, you understand what it takes. And so you're patient and you're, and you're guiding your team to get there because you know what the objective is. And that's what Coach Benier does for this SMU program. DeAndre Williams picking up his first foul near turnover. Be so careful with Davis working there. One of the top thieves in the American as a foul on the attack and an aggressive take to the rim. 
Nut all and company will go to the line. And that's a lot better than what Nut all did on the last drive. He tried the finger roll. This time he's going in off of two feet and powering up and exploding through the defense. There won't be a whole lot of finger rolls in this basketball game, as it won't be from now to the end of the season because there's so much to play for. Hardaway picks up the foul. That's his first. And not all. Sinks the first. One of the seniors honored here this evening as a part of senior night. One of the things with Penny Hardaway is his team gets into the end of the season to the tournament. They like to have more pressure. So I expect Memphis to pressure a little bit more than what they normally do moving into the American tournament. And they're in a very interesting spot because we talked about Houston coming up next for them to close out the regular season. Then they get into the American tournament. They can really improve their standing with a strong finish against Houston and then in the American tournament. Eleven is shoot. And a turnover. Williamson hammers it down. Samuel Williamson off the bench with a knockout shot. No question SMU is going to give Memphis their best shot tonight. And Williams with a baseline J to make it a one-point game. But that shot right there has shown the improvement and the growth uh, that Williamson has shown over the course of the season because he, he used to be really emotional. He used to let his emotion get better, the best of him. He stopped doing that. But there you see on a run out right there, uh, Williamson is able to finish. And that's what SMU likes to do. They like transition. They like to play downhill, uh, which means attacking the basket. When they do that, they're really at their best. Williamson typically known for his rebounding prowess, his driving and scoring, is Elijah McCadden to give Memphis a one-point lead. If this SMU team can stay in transition, they will have a good night tonight because that's where they're at their best. Memphis won the first outing between these two teams in a high-scoring affair. Off to deflection, an easy two for FEO DG. Davis shows the ball, left the layup short, tracked down by Phelps. Phelps barreling into the lane, and that's an offensive foul. So Phelps earning the whistle on senior night. For Nuttall, and Perry, you know, the emotion is a big storyline coming into the night because of the Davis return here to SMU and the seniors as a coach. How do you manage such emotions? Well, you focus on the fundamentals. You focus on your execution. You focus on defensively what it is that you're trying to do. And by focusing in on that, you take away some of the emotional edge that goes along with playing the game of basketball. Turnover is Smith. On the move, scoop shot with the left hand, and Williamson there with another dunk. But that's one of the reasons why I tell you this SMU team really wants to push the basketball. If they can stay in transition, it's going to be a heck of a ball game. McCadden closes the deal at the bucket to cut it to a one-point game. SMU with the advantage early here in Dallas. McCadden is one of the reasons why Memphis has had success this year because he does a little bit of everything. He defends, he rebounds, he can finish at the basket. And his play without having to run a lot of stuff for him and his contribution has been really important. But there you see the drive right there uh, but creates the easy basket. And, and, and that's what McCadden does. He really he can drive the basketball on reversals. Catch and shoot by Nuttall. Draws air. Slap back outside by Williamson, who's been very active thus far. Cardo right into the game for the first time. Shot clock to seven. Wright gets a step and scores. Wright was the leading scorer at Maris before coming over, and he's really a good offensive player. Again, attacking the basket. He can fill it up 
when he gets going. They'll need that tonight. Davis lobbing in, deflected. Two on two, right, splits the difference, can't score. Williams, long pass, and that is way too long. If I'm earlier. Memphis right now, my concern is that SMU is and Davis to come together right now. And they've been, you see them talking right there, they've kind of been the linchpin for this Memphis team. And those two guys have worked well and played well together. Davis and Williams each with three. Three-point lead for the Mustangs. Shot clock to ten. Williamson squaring up, lost the ball, and a steal by Davis. Down the floor for Franklin. Franklin and one. That was a really good call, and that's one of the things that Franklin has the ability to do for them, really finish. But again, you see the trap and the defense right there by Memphis, and it, that's when they're at their best, when they're able to get from their defense easy offensive opportunities. Demaria Franklin will go to the line, but they are going to review this play. Harry, what do you think they might be taking? I, I don't think they are. I think they, they've already said basket was good. Yeah. Yeah. So the I often tell you a lot of times, but this is the good of officiating crew. You know, so they they will be totally in charge tonight. Franklin at the stripe, 63 percent shooter from the line, transfer from the University of Illinois Chicago. One of the things when Franklin came over, Penny was worried about him hunting his shot too much and not being patient and working within the context of the Memphis offense. I think he's, started to, he's doing a much better job now than he was in the beginning of the year. Franklin ties it up at 16. And here comes the Memphis pressure. They'll mix it between man and... And sometimes they'll do some running jump. Phelps, a ricochet. Looked like it may have hit off of a Memphis player at the last second, but instead, it's out of bounds off of SMU. That's what Memphis wants you to do. Take the first quick shot. I don't think that shot works to SMU's advantage. I think they were much more successful when they had patience offensively executed. Jonathan Lawson in the mix for the Tigers. Nice look, and the hammer applied by Dandridge. So Malcolm Dandridge with the flush and a two-point lead. For a great pass by Williams, and that's where he has really become a better teammate, I think, this year in trying to sit up other guys. And again, the Memphis pressure. I told you it was coming, Derek. A steal by Dandridge, a three by Franklin connects. That, Penny Hardaway loves to dial up his pressure as we get the march. He believes in it. He's got this team believing in it. Nine in a row from the Tigers. Phelps into the teeth of the Memphis defense. Tigers ball. It's hard to drive. It's hard to drive against a set defense. There you see a good passing right there. Williams jump, dumping it off. There you see, again, Davis dumping the ball back, knocking down a three. The way Memphis can share the ball, they're at their best when they're unselfish and share the ball. And that's what has made this Memphis team, without a whole lot of big names, really be successful this year. Well, talking to Coach Hardaway, he, he enjoys coaching this team. He really does because they're unselfish, they share the basketball, and it's a team. Williams trying to go up and under and scores. Williams love to work from that elbow there. They run that horn set so he can get the ball right there to the elbow and he can really operate. Williams averaging 19 and 8 in conference games this season. Nearly comes up with a steal, slapped around, out of bounds. 
over to SMU. A seven-point lead for Memphis. We're going to talk about the American tournament when we come back. Even with Houston, because I think Houston is is vulnerable a little bit right now. I don't think, I mean, they're, I know they're winning games, but I think Kelvin's going to take some time to put them back in stride. And I thought they were a little tired when I saw them at East Carolina. They're getting everybody's best shot. I, I think that's one of the tricks for them moving forward is that everyone is bringing it against Houston. Nuttall has his shot blocked by Franklin. Franklin lines up with three too long. And ODG with the loose change. Well, but not just best shot, but they're game planning against them. I mean, they're breaking down film. They're trying to see their weaknesses and everything. And that's what happens when you're the king. Everybody comes after the king. But that's what makes Houston so good. And I just think once they catch their breath and get in the tournament and the routine, I think they'll start getting back on stride. And I'm saying on stride, and they, they, they're beating everybody. <laughs> but I, I, just playing with that pop and that confidence and everything, that will lead them into the NCAA tournament. No, point well made. It's, it's definitely been a challenge for them as of late. Davis pulls up and connects. Hendrick Davis, the all-time leading scorer in the American. He leads the conference in scoring again this year, averaging over 21 points per game. Foul will be charged here to the Tigers. But you see how smooth they are with the ball screen and Davis coming over. He doesn't have to work for every shot. And I just think that Kendrick throughout his career has really had to work one-on-one -on -one for a lot of shots. I think coming to Memphis, Penny's gotten him shots off of action so he doesn't have to work so hard all the time. Davis... The all-time leader in points, assists, and free throws made. He's been such a tremendous player. As Ambrose Hilton working down low and ends. About a three-minute scoring drought for SMU. Davis back to it. Davis. Trying to shake free. Goes all the way in off the window. He knows every nook and cranny of this building. And he did a great job of hanging on to the ball so he could get a layup. And another turnover created by this Memphis defense. Look at it. I mean, he handles the ball. He's looking for somebody to give it to. It wasn't there. He's able to finish at the rim. And he just does a really good job of that. You saw the way he looked off. He's trying to get other people involved. He keeps the ball to either he can score or he can get somebody an easy shot. That's why Memphis doesn't have a lot of turnovers normally in their games. Davis, by the way, has friends and family here tonight from Houston, Texas. And an offensive foul as play will drift the other way. And again, a little bit too active that time as... DeAndre Williams says, my bad. He doesn't quite have the handles that Davis has, so he's got to maybe give it up, go ball screen, pop, roll, and get some his shots more out of action. But the biggest thing right now has been the Memphis defense. I think it's been the biggest difference in this game. Four turnovers over the last seven possessions for SMU to that point. Not all. Had a scene for a moment. And... He may have walked out of bounds, but a foul first. And it'll be charged to Franklin. Coming up later tonight, number eight Arizona travels to Los Angeles to take on USC. Dave Pash and Bill Waldner are on the call, and coverage begins at 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Bill Walton at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I mean, that is must-see TV. He's priceless. I mean, he's got opinion on a lot of things. And, uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember him as a player, and he was an awesome college basketball player. He was so dominant with the UCLA teams back when he played. That's the, the great thing about him. He's a joy to listen to. 
and sometimes you forget that he's one of the greatest college basketball players of all time. But he was like that as a player. I mean, I had the privilege of meeting John Wooden because uh, he was really close friends with my high school coach Morgan Wooden with the McDonald's game, and he would tell Bill Walton stories, and so legitimately he has not changed at all. Nine-point lead for Memphis. Phelps, and that pass to Paul, but a foul first. And that'll be charged to Chandler Lawson. One of the things Penny has to be happy with is defense. They're doing a great job in rotating and running SMU off the three-point line. SMU is not getting a lot of easy looks with the three-point shot, even though Memphis is doubling the ball sometimes. Not off. Got a little contact. Williamson with the floater. Too strong. And it's a rebound for Chandler Lawson. Davis. Now Lawson will line it up and knock it down. Chandler Lawson showing the range from deep. The lead is at double figures. Phelps, Nuttall, and Nuttall stepped out of bounds. Perry, I think every time we've done a game this year, <laughs> that you. has happened. <laughs> Again, look at the ball distribution right there, and this is what this Memphis team has done a really good job of sharing the basketball. And one of the things with that with Davis, they have accepted the fact Memphis has that he's going to handle the ball when we're open, he's going to get us good looks, and there is no problem with that. And because of that, it's made him a better player, it's made the other Memphis players better, and it's made them a better team and more efficient offensively. He already has five assists. He's the American leader in assists per game, averaging 5.6 per. You know, coaches always talk about accepting the roles, and that's why that's so important. Phelps trying to create and one for Zurich Phelps on the way he'll go to the line and try to finish off the three-point play Phelps is one of the best players in the American Conference getting to the basket he's big and he's strong you see how he keeps his head up right there he keeps his body between the basketball and the basket and the guy guarding him he does a great job of finishing Phelps, the team's leading scorer, averaging 17 points per game this season. And how about this guy? His role has changed from last year to this year, with Davis being out of the lineup. We, we haven't talked about that a lot. And so DG goes glass to put it in. So DG takes advantage of the missed free throw. What challenges has that created for this team? Because of the coaching change, Kendrick Davis decided to transfer. Nothing against Rob Lanier at all, but he wanted to try his hand elsewhere. And that did create kind of a talent vacuum. And a corner three is in, this time from Jonathan Lawson. Well, again, even with Davis out, this Memphis team does a really good job of spacing the floor, dribble drive, and kicking the basketball, and getting good looks. But even Rob Lanier said that Davis was very, very classy and had nothing but complimentary things to say about him and his departure from SMU. Nine-point game after the Williamson bucket into Williams. And a foul coming up. This will be against Zach Nuttall over the top. Nine-point advantage for Memphis, the American on ESPN other teams in the league that has that when you're not playing in a league that has a lot of teams with quad one win it's harder to move up and so therefore um, you got to work a little harder and that's where your non-conference schedule then becomes extremely important coach hardaway talked to his team today about the importance of seeding and certainly this game plays into that if they don't win the two seed is still at stake in the american with Memphis and Tulane. The drop and the bucket for Elijah McCadden. And again, that's what McCadden does. I mean, he plays so well off the ball. I can't express strong enough how important it is to have a guy that can produce points and you don't have to run plays for him.
Memphis's bench, by the way, has really performed well in this game as Williamson gets blocked down low by Lawson. Seven to shoot. Not off. Can't get it to go. Snatched out of the air by McCadden. All the way in and one for Jaden Hardaway. So Hardaway takes it hard to the rack and one. And that's one of the things that Penny likes about his team. They can, they got different guys that can push the ball. That time Davis was off the ball. A McCadden got it, pushed it, was able to hit hard away, and he was able to close. And they accept their roles. They play so well. And they have all year, Derek. They've accepted this type of chemistry and have really flourished with it. What a Saturday of hoops we have coming up. The top teams in the Big 12 square off at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, number 9 Texas, hosts number 3 Kansas. Then it's Duke and North Carolina, and at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, the top teams in the Pac-12 get after it. Number 4 UCLA hosts number 8 Arizona. Another great day of hoops on the way on Saturday. Foul, by the way, was charged to Agunane. That was his first. Not all. Attacking, stopped by Lawson. And a foul against Memphis. You know, you talk about the Duke North Carolina game and growing up and coaching in the ACC, um, I can tell you the rivalry there. Um, I knew Tommy Amaker, Johnny Dawkins growing up, and they talked a lot about it. The thing fans have to understand is those kids socially all dealt with each other in the same area. They went to the same barbershop. They went to the same sandwich shop. They went to the same nightclub. So the competitiveness was there, and the rivalries were real, and it really was so, so meaningful in so many different ways. So that North Carolina group, as they say it's the best rivalry in basketball. I don't argue with that. And of course, North Carolina trying to keep their hopes going for the NCAA tournament. Incredibly, preseason number one. They're the first four out right now, according to Joe Lenardi, so they've got to take care of some business on Saturday. Without question. Can you imagine walking in a barbershop, being in a chair, and somebody from Duke, the North Carolina, that has won, said, okay, you got to get out because we won, so I'm going before you. I mean, that's that. That's how deep the rivalry and the competitiveness gets. That, that's an off-the-clock rivalry. It's not just on the court. It's all the time. Steal by Williamson. Williamson in trouble. I love this Memphis defense. I mean, defensively, they have really stepped it up today. Not all swings it. Open shooter at Smith. Knocks it down. Jalen Smith hits the triple. That's a nine-point lead for Memphis. And this SMU team, though, has not gotten out of or playing different than the way they like to play. And a steal by Williamson. His long arms get in the way again. Long wingspan has played a role here for SMU. Smith going to bump off Davis. Knocks down a three. Smith is a really good one-on-one -on -one player. He, he's a pass-first guy, but if he's open for that three, he likes to shoot it. Off the top of the backboard, kept alive. Hardaway, and that is thrown away. It'll be SMU basketball. By the way, that last shot, a two, not a three. And watch Smith. He's driving the ball there. It is a two. He's able to knock that down. But he, Smith has come in. Again, this SMU team has not gone away from the way that they want to play, and that's why they've been able to get back in this game because Memphis is really playing very good defensively. 7-0 run. Ooh, almost a 10-0 run for SMU. Davis at the controls. The four and a half left to go first half. Spirited first session of basketball here in Dallas. Cadden. 
in the tight rope. Wide open. Davis three connects. And he looks back at his bench, his old bench, to say hello. Yes, indeed. He said, now you know I don't miss the shot. <laughs> Double digit lead for the Memphis Tigers. Oh, DG. Now Williamson with seven to shoot, and that pass ends up in the front row. Kendrick Davis Perry knocking down the threes. He really is. There you see they get good space and he knocks down the three and it's a, it's a moving target. There's still a lot of basketball to be played and it's interesting for the fans and it makes coaches stay up late at night. No doubt about it because one of the other things that you can't really see in a lot of cases when you're dealing with your own business is what else is going on around the country that could affect you. And you really just try to stay focused on your team, what you need to do, and how you need to do it. Dandridge could not collect that pass. And thrown back outside into the backcourt. And Phelps will touch it up. It'll be a backcourt violation against SMU. But, but, but Rob, Lanier, Rob Lanier likes that because his team he got back to pushing the basketball. This SMU team is at its best when it's in transition. 10-point lead for Memphis, who has forced 10 turnovers from SMU on the season. Memphis forcing 15 errors by the opposition. Nearly an unforced one there by the Tigers. Davis on the march. Down to seven. Kill a crossover. Short on the three. And a loose ball foul coming up against SMU. Davis really wanted to, there to be a little bit more movement. You know, Dandridge was in that low post, and he wanted him to, to be more active, either on the block or flashing to the high post. That's why they brought Williams back in, because Williams now can go to the high post. It'll be a one-on-one -one situation here for Memphis. Tomorrow in the association, our next doubleheader starts in Boston with Jason Tatum and the Celtics. Now second in the East behind the Red Hot Bucks. Hosting the Nets at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's off to the Mile High City for a matchup between the top teams in the West. John Morant and the Grizzlies taking on Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. How do you like to play for a coach that has a shoe named after him? That's, <laughs> you know your coach means business. He was probably pretty good when he played if he has his own shoe. <laughs> Williamson, Phelps, turn around, Jay, bounces in. That's a good shot for Phelps. He took that instead of trying to drive to the basket. And again, SMU's now making some adjusting to the double teams and the pressure methods have gone at them. One thing that has kept SMU in this game at the last media timeout, they were crushing Memphis on second chance points to the tune of 16 to nothing. Baseline for Williams, and that's the walk. So DeAndre Williams turns it over. I think he was trying to do a Euro step and it just didn't work. That's why I turned and said, what did I do? But uh, certainly right now, you know, SMU, and this is a, I'm telling you, this SMU team has gotten better over the course of the year. They've, felt, they've lost about five games uh, that were five points or less. Um, they just have not had the ability to close certain games out. Davis with a side swipe. Down the lane! DeAndre Williams. Well, again, Davis is the catalyst to a lot of the stuff right now that Memphis is doing. And defensively, this Memphis team is really playing well tonight. I think. 11 point advantage. Phelps flies in and lays it up with the left hand. And, well, we'll get a stop here. Phelps. Unsure as to what is happening. Create something there, perhaps, with that swipe at the ball. 
Well, evidently they didn't think it was severe enough because they went back to check. And that's what they were checking. I don't know what we're possessing to even attempt. Now SMU's coming with more pressure. Franklin, Williams, down low for Dandridge. That's where Williams has made himself a better player, I think, this year in his ability to pass the basketball. And Phelps got fouled on the way to the rim. It'll be a one-and-one one at minimum here for Phelps. They're, they like to get Williams in the middle of the floor because he can finish, he can pass the basketball, and he just does a really good job of making decisions for this Memphis team. Sharing the basketball has been a key to the Memphis success tonight. And they already have somebody who can do it in Davis, but Williams moving that basketball effectively. And they enjoy doing it. I mean, I think, and that's why Penny has enjoyed coaching this team. They really have enjoyed being a team and sharing the basketball, uh, both offensively and defensively in their rotations and everything. Every time there's a ball screen, they either double it or they switch, but they're playing defensively together as a unit. 14 assists already for Memphis in the first half with just over a minute left to go. They average 15 per game. You know, McCadden is on the ball right now. They take Davis off the ball. Davis gets hit by Wright, and he'll go to the line. And just as a coach, it gives you more flexibility when you can actually coach and move people around and strategize and your team's not looking at you. Well, I don't want to do this or I don't play this position or you're asking me to do something. But yet they all are accepting it and they're playing within their roles. And I think that's what makes this Memphis team a really good team this year. Right, by the way, just picked up his third foul. So he heads out. Stefan Todorovic into the game and that's a tough loss because Wright's a guy who can generate some offense for you Davis working on a double double knocks down the first free throw one more Two from the Houston, Texas native. It's a 13-point lead for Memphis. With 105 remaining before halftime. And again, Memphis comes with the pressure. Smith. And that is nearly another turnover. Todorovic for three. Missed it. Not all. Slaps the ball together to lay it in. Davis gets a step. Nice no look speed and an easy layup for Franklin. See, but that's why this Memphis team has accepted Davis and allows him sometimes to go one-on-one -on -one because he shares the basketball. He always has his head up. He's always looking to see if somebody's got a better shot. Raise and release by Nuttall is an air ball. Back to Memphis. Watch Kendrick on this. What? You see, he keeps his head up. Good no-look pass right there. Great finish. But you know, he has enjoyed, I think, in his flourish, playing under Penny's tutelage because nobody was a better distributor than Penny Hardaway was when he was in college. 13-point lead for Memphis. Back in 30. The things Penny talked about was holding teams to around 50 points. He's always looked at, we can hold teams in the 50s. We know we're capable of scoring more than that. We're going to be in pretty good position. So that's why he's worked so hard defensively to get better with how they play. Franklin out to catch. Memphis can hold for the last shot. Close out half one. Davis down to three. Down to two. Davis just throws it up. No foul call. Davis wanted one, but Memphis will settle for a 13-point lead and a technical foul called. 
against Kendrick Davis, who's had a good half. We'll fill you to shoot it, and then we'll go to the alternating possession. Davis thought he was fouled there and was not, and he's trying to debate with officials that are basically their big time officials, their NCAA Final Four caliber officials. They're not going to debate with him, and a technical was called, and that's how we start in the second half. SMU will now take the ball out because it goes to alternating possession. So a bit of a dent into the Memphis momentum to start half two. Nice backdoor look, but layup missed by Phelps. A little bit too much English on that layup attempt. Great call by Rob Mia coming out of timeout. I mean, coming out of halftime. Williams. Launches with the right hand. And a loose ball out to Jalen Smith. Don't like that possession for Memphis. It was more individual and it, and instead, instead of passing the ball. And now we come back and Williams got hit across the face on a post stop. And we're going to probably giggle or, or hurtful, but you, they're really consistently any contact above the shoulders or in the face gets upgraded. That's the first foul against Effie Odigi. Andre Williams gets the bounce on the first free throw. And for Memphis, Penny wants them to come, go back and be in methodical, execute, and play with a lot of intensity. Two from Williams. So in essence, the two they gave up on the technical foul by Davis, they get back here because of the flagrant one. Thirteen point lead for the Memphis Tigers who can clinch the two seed in the America tournament with a win tonight. Williams. Hardaway. Shot clock to 10. Davis hounded to the corner. Hardaway. Three ball up. That's no good. Loose. Lawson got his hands on it, but couldn't connect on the pass. And a turnover. Good job by Memphis getting back and taking SMU out of that transition. And as I say that, that they step up and they bury a three with Smith. Again, that's where SMU is most dangerous in transition. Perry, we talked about SMU trying to get close in games. Memphis has a propensity sometimes to let you hang around as Lawson working in the paint draws a foul. Well, sometimes Memphis gets in the laws, and their laws come from taking bad shots. Their laws sometimes comes from not rebounding the basketball and allowing second shots or missing foul shots. Yeah. As Phelps getting the foul. And again, you look at how this game has played out here. You, SMU, obviously, in front of their fans on senior night, they want this game badly. They'll get, obviously, a crack at things in the... American tournament, but this is a big game for them tonight. Well, it is, but Phelps is so much a part of what they do. He's got to stay in the moment. He can't get emotional about a call. Davis on the attack. You know, guys have to understand that, you know, this is a 40-minute game and that it's, there's ebbs and flows and you can't let your emotions get away from you because something doesn't go your way. You have to just keep playing. Davis in double figures this evening. Odigi double team at the post. Davis almost able to steal that. Smith tries another three, the Rainmaker short. Williamson with a rebound. The Euro and a foul off the drive by Zach Nuttall. But this is where Davis is so tough. Him driving the basketball in traffic. The reason why he's able to finish is he always keeps his head up. He knows where the rim is and he locates it. But one of the things that creates problems for Memphis, and I talk about the, their lack of defensive rebounding. That time, not all got fouled because SMU was able to get a second shot. 
Coming up later tonight, number eight Arizona travels to Los Angeles to take on USC. Dave Pash and Bill Walton are on the call, and coverage begins at 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Great boots going on out there in the Pac-12. We'll see that on display tonight at 11 Eastern. Memphis is going with their spread action, and they'll look to try to ball screen Davis and let him create. Davis into Lawson. Lawson goes to the glass. And again, that was, was created by the spacing that Memphis has. Lead of 13 for the Memphis Tigers. Smith and the Williamson turnaround shot off the mark. Lawson cleans it up. Davis flips it up, left it a little short. Smith knocked to the floor, and that elicits a whistle against the Memphis Tigers and Kendrick Davis. Davis is a little frustrated. He's used to getting that call a lot of times. And when he drives, what he does is any little contact, he kind of fades back and acts like the contact is really affecting his shot. And he's been able to sell that for four years. So sometimes on nights when he's not getting that, he gets a little flustered. But as they're advanced, then he's not going to maybe get that call as consistently as he's been used to because... You know, it's better officiating, better players, that you get to the tournament. Not all can't hit the three. By the way, that's the second foul on Davis. Down the floor. Oh, Chandler Lawson. Steamroll Ricardo Wright. That was a tough pass. Uh, Davis gave, gave him a pass where he had the, the lead. And I tell you what, he put him in harm's way. He should have passed on not making that pass. He should have hit the wing and let the wing feed the post. That's 6'7", 215 coming down the train tracks in the lane to Ricardo Wright. Williamson. Now Smith. Step back three. Over Davis, can't get it to go. ODG battling with Williams. And a whistle. ODG is really doing a good job on the offensive glass. That's what he's known to be able to do. Uh, he's got a big body. He's tough in the paint. He does a lot, a great job on duck ends. He's given SMU an inside presence, and he's done a great job tonight. Foul charge to DeAndre Williams. Already five team fouls against Memphis, and we haven't hit the first media timeout in half two. Well, one of the things, Memphis front line has to beat you with quickness, not with physicality. They're not physically overpowering, but they are quick and they are skilled. So they have to move their feet and they have to legitimately block people out. DG puts on the first free throw. Phelps back in for the Mustangs. We'll see Keon Ambrose Hilton to spell ODG after ODG's second free throw attempt. And Penny has been talking to Davis all during this foul shooting time to get him to understand what it is he wants in the run. Play within our system. Play within what we practice. OG has the free throw. He has six double-digit score on the year, averaging 11 points per game. Ambrose Hilton in to spell him as he goes over matters with Coach Lanier. You know, when the coach gives you the keys to the car, you have to drive it well all the time. And Penny Hardaway has given Kendrick Davis the keys to the car. Hopping in the lane is McCaddy. Left it a little short. The scramble for the basketball. Controlled by Wright. Williamson gets a step to the lane, and he is fouled. 
11 point lead for the Memphis Tigers, but SMU at the line when we come back. Impressive how he's gotten the other players involved. And Penny's constantly been talking to him, just called him over right now to visit with him again and trying to get him to fully understand what he's trying to get his team to be able to do at this point in the game. Williamson now with seven points. After that free throw is Penny Hardaway. Has big designs on the rest of the campaign for his team. And he's hoping they can get the win here and obviously take care of business this weekend against Houston. Yeah, he understands that Houston game is going to be really emotional. That's why he's just trying to get this thing done tonight in a workmanlike manner. The Cadet. And a foul against Ambrose Hilton dealing with DeAndre Williams. One of the things that I don't think Williams gets as much much credit for is his ability to play and post up in the in, in the post area because a lot of times he's playing against physically bigger guys the drive by davis some contact there no call smu hanging around down by nine smith the kick for right knocks it down That's big time execution that time by SMU. Seven straight for the Mustangs and an ear steal by Phelps and Franklin able to keep it alive. McCadden down low to Williams. Williams throws it up at the rim and a couple of free throws on the way for DeAndre Williams. That was a that was great activity. There you see driving the basketball, kicking, and being able to knock down the three-point shot is one of the things that SMU has been really good at. Defensively, they're trying to speed up this tempo, get in transition, and really get really good looks. Williams, Williams is just amazing. Again, he's not physically overpowering. But he's wiry, he's athletic, and he's extremely smart. And he puts himself in a position to where he gets fouled. Double figures in 25 straight games heading into tonight as Hardaway. Back in the mix for the Memphis Tigers. And double figures for a 26th game in a row is DeAndre Williams. But only gets one out of two. It's a seven-point game. Supporting the Memphis Sox down at foul shot. But they've always gotten in trouble when they haven't shot the ball well from the foul line. Smith. This is where SMU has had problems sometimes this season in his half-court offense. Open shooter. Raises the side of the backboard. That three by right missing the mark. And a near steal by Phelps on the other end. But what are you seeing here from Williams thus far to kind of help this team out? Well, I tell you what, I think first of all, his intensity level this year has really improved. He has stayed with the game plan, he stayed focused. And the other thing is his skill set. He's done a much better job in his post ups and his passing of the basketball and getting other people easier shots, which has freed him up to be a better offensive player. The oldest player in college basketball, 26 years old, is Franklin. Cans a three from the corner, and it's 60 to 50. And that's what they were hoping to get from Franklin when he came over here to Memphis. Uh, another three-point shooter to spread the defense. Smith. The bump on Davis, too strong off the glass. Davis down the floor. Deflected, nearly stolen by Phelps, kept alive. And we'll get a 
foul here coming up against SMU. Yeah, but people don't really understand this about Dave. He made a bad pass. It was deflected. It looked like SMU had the ball, and he dived to go get it to save it. I mean, this young man is really giving this. Look at that dive for the basketball. He doesn't give up on anything, and so sometimes when he gets emotional about a lack of call, it's all part of his personality, but that's what Penny Hardaway loves about him, his competitive spirit, and that's why he, he wanted to coach him. That was the fourth against Ricardo Wright. Down to 11 seconds to shoot. Davis. Fade away. Can't get it to go, but he gets the whistle, the elusive whistle he's been looking for tonight to the disapproval of those in attendance for SMU. Well, what he does is he gives you a lot of jerks and head fakes and pump fakes and arm fakes. And, and, and he feels the contact. Wait, when he felt the contact, he knew he had to go up and take the shot. He is so street smart as a basketball player. And so when he doesn't get that, that's when he gets frustrated a little bit because he's such a competitor. But the thing right now for SMU, we talked about how they really like to operate in transition. Memphis right now is not letting them get in transition, so they're going to have to execute in the half court. They have struggled when they've had to do that. So it's going to be interesting with 13 minutes to see how well they can execute in within the half court. Memphis, if they win tonight, will clinch the two seed in the American tournament. Top five teams receive a bye in the first round. Tulane swept Memphis. That's why the two seed is still in play for the Green Wave. Todorovic in deep trouble and has to call a timeout. And again, we get to the fact that half-court offense has been something SMU is struggling with, and it's showing his head again tonight. Dream coming up <laughs> next week. It's champ week, and some of the notable tournaments on the men's side, ACC, Big 12, SEC, and, of course, the American. Great time of year. Without question, it's a lot of thrills, and everybody starts with a new slate. And, uh, you know, they got a chance to get to the dance. All you have to do is play well in the tournament. Oh, and Kendrick Davis was almost off to the races. But instead, it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation for SMU. That was extremely interesting because Penny chose not to just play straight defense. He's showing that they're doubling the ball screens or they're hedging on the ball screens. They're doing what we call blitzing it. They're rotating instead of just playing solid vanilla chocolate type of defense. But SMU is having a hard time scoring right now in the half court. DG back at the line for the front end of a 1-1. One one. Good on the first. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you tonight. Memphis leading it by 10. A shot to clinch the two seed in the American tournament with a win. Meanwhile, SMU, their seeding can move within that 8-9 game or on the other side of it, the 7-10 game in the American tournament. So... For them, it's about playing a good brand of basketball as as they get ready here for tournament play. And, also, and, and learning and feeling confident how to win close games. I think that's the thing that's really important tonight. DG now with eight points and seven rebounds for the Mustangs. Dandridge throws it up with the right hand, lips off the rim, nearly saved, and it is saved by Lawson in the backcourt. Launching a three as Davis, that's no good. Back down the floor is Phelps. Phelps in the lane, hangs in the air and scores. That's, that's where Phelps is really dangerous. He gets to the rim as well as anybody in this conference. And again, SMU in transition, they're really good. They're going to have to continue to try to stay in transition or settle down in their half-point offense. They're going right now, Memphis is going with a horns look. SMU got it to 56-50. And a turnover here to cut into the deficit further. A seven-point lead as SMU cuts into the deficit. 
And it all starts with Phelps right there with a big time layup. That's in line. And then they have three teams on the two line. How tough is that conference? So somebody's going to wind up being in the same block. And so it's just a lot of unanswered questions, but it's a lot of good basketball to be played. And of course, Houston, that fourth number one seed representing the American and an opportunity for them to again continue on that path that they've been on throughout the season. And a lot of it is going to have to do with where they send the seeds, like the number one seed. And that's really what they're playing for. Of course, Houston could have the ultimate home court advantage later on as the final four of Houston. Phelps on the drive and a foul called on the attack by Zurich Phelps. Phelps is really stepping up and playing well, but again, the thing that gets Memphis in the suit is their lack of rebounding the basketball, and a lot of that, I think, has to do with the, the, their physicality um, with certain lineups that they have on the floor. The rebounding in this game to that point, 12-5, the advantage on the offensive glass for SMU. And that's helped lead to 21 second chance points to just one for Memphis. Yeah, and, and they're going to be playing against more physical front lines than what they're facing tonight. And so I just think, again, we're talking projecting, you know, not just in the American Conference tournament, but also in the NCAA tournament, having to be able to fix that problem. And a foul going the other way off the miss free throw by Phelps. It'll be against SMU. By the way, Dandridge headed out for the Tigers with his fourth foul. As ODG can't believe it. William is saying, I've been telling you they're pushing me all night. And finally, you call it. Yeah, that's good lobbying by a senior citizen right there. I mean, he has really <laughs> been working the referees on that. But now he's got to go to the foul line, and it's important right now for him to knock down his foul shots. Could be a parade to the free throw line here the rest of the way. Both teams already in the bonus with 11.22 left to go as Phelps will get a rest. Second foul picked up by FEO DJ. First one is in. When I talk about Williams' maturity, you know, I mean, I think he's felt like he's been pushed to hell, but he has not let that affect him from playing and keeping his concentration and putting himself in position maybe to help Memphis make some key plays going down the stretch. One out of two, and Williamson is fouled. So McCadden battling for that loose ball with Samuel Williamson. That leads to a whistle on Memphis. What a Saturday of hoops we have coming up. The top teams in the Big 12 square off at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. Number 9, Texas host number 3, Kansas. Then it's Duke and North Carolina. And at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, the top teams in the Pac-12 get after it as number 4 UCLA host number 8 Arizona. Should be another great day of hoops. As we round out regular season action and get ready for champ week. Williamson has played really well today. He's given SMU a real good boost, both his rebounding and I think also his defensive play. Ninth point of the night for Williamson as he tries to get into double figures. And the transfer from Louisville has a pair, and the lead is at six for Memphis. Eric Jones and Perry Clark with you tonight. Thanks for joining us from Dallas, Texas, and Moody Coliseum. Franklin, got it. That's what he came to Memphis to help them do. When Penny took him, he wanted another perimeter shooter to go with Davis to help spread the defense. If he can continue to knock down those shots, he will be a tremendous addition for this Memphis team. Unable to answer is Smith. Loose ball. Williamson had it for a moment, but could not maintain possession of the ball. Loose, taken away. Run.
right, down the floor, the long for Williamson. Great transition again by SMU. The fans making some noise at Moody Coliseum, hoping for some of that Moody magic. Franklin. And a rebound to Williamson. Now this is where SMU has to be able to execute right now in the half court. Smith swings it. Right will launch. No good. Chandler Lawson with a loose ball. You should know one of the key cogs in the offense for Memphis in terms of guard play, Alex Lomax, not in action tonight. And Williams floating in, can't score, try to tip it back. And Lawson kept it alive. Lomax dealing with injuries. That ball slapped away and stolen. Oh! Smith was not looking. Davis takes advantage, and he is fouled with a couple of free throws on the way. What do you see here from Williamson, Coach? Well, right there, he's running the floor real well, and that's what he does. Again, SMU in their transition, get the easy basket. And th then you see right there a big-time basket right there. This Memphis team... And transition is really tough, and Davis has done a really great job with his assist. You can see right there, not only is he scoring, he's getting other people involved, which is really, really helping. Franklin stepping up, knocking down shots, has really been a big influence right now for this Memphis team. Second straight double-double against SMU. So his former teammates have not been able to slow him down. In his homecoming game, here tonight. That, that was a big time steal. It almost where he, he knew who they were going to look and try to get the ball to, uh, to push the ball down the floor. An 85% free throw shooter. Able to knock down the first. That foul, by the way, was charged to Ricardo Wright. His fifth, he's done for the night. Second one by Davis, so that takes a shooter away for Rob Lanier. Leads at nine. SMU's been able to get a little close, but Memphis making plays. The second half moves on. Nine minutes left to go. Williams drives all the way in and attacks the rim. Williamson is a good ba basketball player. He played well at Louisville. He's come here. They put him in a position where if he can be effective in this half court, that'll help SMU's half court offense execution. Because they can space him and he can put the ball on the floor because he's skilled. 14 and 7 tonight for Samuel Williamson. Corner three, short. Chandler Lawson offensive rebound. Out to his brother Jonathan Lawson. Ten to shoot. Franklin. Williams with five. Fade away. Jay grazes the rim. Williamson with the loose ball. I think they have to get Williams more on on the wing instead of posting up because he's fading away on a lot of those shots. Ambrose Hill working against Williams. Stuck. Lost the ball for a moment. And threw it away. Davis has the numbers. Davis all the way to the rack. Look for Davis to try to finish now. He's been really doing a good job of dishing the basketball. But I am look for him now every time he gets it to try to finish at the rim. The all-time leading scorer in American history has 19, a lead at 9 for Memphis. Williamson tries a 3, that's no good. Tap back outside by Ambrose Hilton, still loose, controlled by Davis. 
Davis trying to weave through the defense. Lost the ball. Slid on top of it. He and the timeout. a timeout called by Memphis. Samuel Williamson moving for this SMU team. There you see Williams really exhausted and the bigs have been battling. The pace of this game has been a frantic one up and down and I think it's worn on both teams. Hardaway will toss in for the Tigers. Into Williams. Williams creates some space and connects. That's where he's better facing the basket. When he has his back to the basket, he's not as effective. Another steal by Davis. Hanging in the air is Franklin, and two free throws on the way following the foul. That's where P I think Davis's contribution is underrated. Defensively, he comes up with so many steals. Obviously, he watches film. Obviously, he's a student of the game. And to put himself in a position where he is, where he's constantly around the basketball and can come up with steals is a credit to his basketball IQ. Davis, so tremendous in terms of coming up with steals. Team high 59 thefts heading into tonight. He had three of those in the win against Cincinnati on Sunday in a 76 to 73 win over the Bearcats as Franklin sees the first one run out. Memphis's Achilles heel in games where they've struggled is the lack of defensive rebounding and lack of making foul shots. They have to get in that rhythm of knocking down their foul shots. 13 of 19, the last media timeout. And the difference is making it a one possession game, a two possession game, or a double digit lead. 72 60, and it can make a big difference in a game like this. Ooh, not all almost got caught. Sleeping. Smith has done a good job on the point, which is giving Phelps a run to drive the basketball. Not all some space for his jump shot. But this guy right here, Smith, has done a really good job of running the show for SMU. Williamson, floater with the right hand, too strong. And Chandler Lawson battling down low for the rebound. The ball will stay in Davis's hands. Franklin. Now Williams. Nice cut to the rim by Hardaway. Could not get that layup attempt to drop. Phelps on the move. Williamson threw it inside and it's intercepted en route to ODG. Williams can't corral that pass, stolen the other way. Not all to the post. And that ball gets kicked. It'll be back over to SMU and they really wanted Phelps to take that shot. I thought he should have taken that corner shot. But he really likes to drive the ball so much, but it was better for him that I thought to take that shot. Phelps four of seven tonight from the field. Different performance for him versus the last time he saw Memphis. Back in January, he's five of fifteen in that game. Smith. Go DG. For cutting Phelps. Phelps. Off balance layup missing. Davis. Flying back down the floor. Could not finish. Controlled though by Memphis yet again. I thought he got bumped on that one. He would have been. But he's just staying with it and playing. And let's see. Got an injury. Franklin is shaken up. And we'll see Jonathan Lawson come into the game. And Penny Harder, that gives Penny a chance to kind of debate with the officials on Davis's last drive. I thought he got bumped a little bit, and I think Penny's agreeing with me. And right there. And again, um, now he lowers the shoulder to drive the basketball, but defensively, you're not established a position. There is contact. I thought it could have been a foul. Franklin out for the moment. 12 point lead for Memphis. 5 10 remaining. Davis 
Baseline access cut off. Double teamed at the corner and a timeout call by the Tigers. Back in 30 seconds with Memphis leading it by 12 in Dallas. One of the things now, every time Davis is getting the ball on the side, SMU is downing him, which means they're forcing him to the baseline and they're trying to use their size and all the traffic. I think Memphis has to get him at the top of the key where he can go right or left and not on the side. Two seconds to shoot, turnaround shot by Williams. Just short. Loose ball controlled by Phelps. Phelps will peel back. The rest of his team gets down the floor. He'll launch a three. And, oh, that one went halfway down and then spun out. Pass launched down the floor. And then Williams, I think he was trying to slap that into a teammate in the corner in McCadden, but it goes out of bounds over to SMU. That was a tough play, though. I thought Davis should have just brought the ball down, ran some clock, and was able to get the ball to win when he was in a better position to operate. But those two worked so well together. Four-minute scoring drought for SMU. That three turnovers in that span of time as well. Memphis is going zone right now. Kind of matching up with guys in the area. Not all. Phelps. Phelps falling down. No call. And the basketball will go over to Memphis. The mistake these guys are trying to make are trying to, instead of trying to make a shot, they're trying to create a foul situation. And uh, that's not going to work with these officials. Memphis trying to hold off SMU down the stretch with under four minutes left to go. Davis crossing up and drilling a three. Kendrick Davis, the 20 point barrier yet again, 22 tonight. He does a really good job with his pace of his dribble and then with his step back. 15 point lead for Memphis. Again, Memphis is in the zone. Seven to shoot. Smith to the lane, outside for Phelps. Phelps step back, double clutch on the three, and at the top of the backboard, and that is a steal for Memphis and Davis. Davis on the way up, and a foul. It, it, Davis only knows one speed, and that's attack. And that time he's on the break, he attack. He put it, they'll go to the line and Memphis is in control. Consistency of being able to score, they come up a little short. This was a big game for Memphis because they have Houston lurking on Saturday. And one of the tricks that you take a look at with this situation for them is they're considered an at-large team. But you don't want to leave the crack open for potentially issues with maybe you get left out in the cold if you don't deliver here tonight and then have a, a rough showing in the tournament. Well, I did the Memphis-Tulane game. When they lost to Tulane, that was a really tough loss. And at that point in time, Temple was really kind of in the catbird seat. The Memphis, this Memphis team has fought its way back. They put themselves in a really great position. They can lock in the two seed. They're back in the NCAA tournament picture, and so they don't want to let up. I think the Houston game will be an emotional game and a game that will really help to find them going into the NCAA tournament. And one on the way for Zurich Phelps is Penny Hardaway's crew dealing with Houston on Sunday. And here, a look at their resume, a 10-seed line for them projected by Joe Lenardi. Well, one of the things that Memphis has done is they've always played the good out-of-conference schedule. I mean, they step up and they play other people, and that helps put them in a really good position. But in the conference, I think being able to finish and certainly being able to challenge Houston, that game is means an awful lot to both of these two clubs. They both respect and recognize each other, and it's going to be a really intense ball game on Sunday. 2.30 left, 14-point lead for Memphis. 
Davis fading away, got blocked. Williamson, nice speed for the moment at least to Phelps before Phelps can't corral it. And it's back over to Memphis. Davis is so competitive and uh, to where, I mean, he works hard. This young man stays in the gym. I talked to the people at SMU. They said when he was here, every time you walk in the gym, he was there. You talk to the people at Memphis, every time you walk in the gym, he's there. And so, you know, he's not good by happenstance, he's by hard work. Off the steal, Williamson tied up, and the jump ball, possession arrow, points in favor of the Memphis Tigers. Right there against pressure. You want to put the ball in Davis' hands, then kind of clear out. Lawson ahead. Cat trying to get a step on Smith, and that will draw a whistle. Memphis will go back to the free throw line. And there you see Penny. He's back talking with Davis. It is a constant uh, teacher to pupil relationship that they have. Well, it was interesting talking to Coach Hardaway today because one of the dynamics of the the transferring process with Davis is, look, at the end of the day, whenever you get a player into a program, no matter where they came from, how good they were, they have to fit within your system, and that means defense in Memphis. Well, it does, but also, you know, it's a level of respect. It, it, Part, the 90% of coaching is respect and being able to earn your players' respect. And so what you say has meaning to them because they hear so many voices from so many people that listening to your voice should become the most important thing. And we discussed Davis transferring to Memphis. That took place back on May 6th last year. And he has been such a huge addition to this program leader in points and assists mid-season wooden award top 25 option as well as davis onto the bench for the moment with a 16 point lead for memphis smith the speed did not all agonane sets the screen not all short on the three Wide open down low is Jaden Hardaway, the easiest points of the night, perhaps, for the Memphis Tigers. But again, the spacing by this Memphis team has allowed them to be able to do that. And again, I think this SMU team going into their uh, coach has done a really outstanding, Coach Lanier has done a really great job with them. Their inability to consistently play in the half court and manufacture points in the half court as has again shown his head tonight. And as he starts adding pieces to his SMU team, that will not become as much of an issue. Under a minute left to go from Dallas. In the shoot. Cadden with five. And a foul on the drive by Elijah McCadden. You know, so much of being a head coach is leadership. And when you talk to Rob Lanier, it's obvious that he's in total control of this program. He understands where he wants to go. He's really, really smart in his approach to handling things. He's been mentored well. He's been around winning programs. And this SMU program is in really, really good hands. Reminder coming up following the end of this game, Sports Center. It's Memphis closing in on the two seed in the American tournament. As both teams starting to empty the bench with 43.3 left to go. You now Penny Hardaway brought over Frank Haith, the head coach of, of, of Tulsa, for more experience on his bench, especially with a young staff and a young team, and that has really been beneficial to him. Seniors getting a chance to get a round of applause as Zach Nuttall went off to the bench. 
Smith. Now a three it is short from Jackson Young. 25 seconds left to go, and Memphis can hang on to this. The right of finish to the homecoming game for Kendrick Davis. And Perry, an impressive performance by Memphis in the second half. It is, and they did it by executing, and Sunday will be an emotional war, and they've been able not to have to use all that emotion here tonight, which is what Coach Hardaway was looking to do. A 14-2 run by Memphis to finish the game. And that's all from Dallas. But the final score is Memphis 81, SMU 62. For Perry Clark, I'm Derek Jones.